he's rooted in his family, his, especially his grandma. Like she's always say, uh, just be the best at whatever you do. Even if that's flipping burger, just be the best at it. Uh, so you, you, you don't play for second place. Second place is the first loser. Anything I do, I want to be the best at it. He was with her so much as a young child uh, that she left a, a last impression on him. And, and we talked a lot about it. And you know, she just seemed to be that guy, that person for him that motivated him to be uh, a better person. Just growing up with her, uh, it just basically shows you how you can survive. Uh, it just shows you the things that you thought you need, you really didn't need. Um, we, we survived with so little. Uh, we were, we were, like, the heat was off. We would use the stove to heat up the house. Um, she made a way out of no way. Uh, we didn't have no hot water. Um, we could boil some on the stove. Um, we didn't have no syrup. She can make syrup out of water and, and um, sugar. So it just, it just showed you that things that you think you need, you really don't need. She's the motivation behind what he does. He's got a tattoo of his grandmother on his arm. and so I just think she's that person that he looks to for that motive, that inner motivation. Um, and he, even though she's not with us anymore, you know, he feels like he doesn't want to let her down. Her passing, uh, that was a, that was a tough one on me. She was the foundation of the family, so so once she left, um, it kind of just sent us in a spiral. I was staying by myself, um, doing things that I shouldn't have been doing, uh, young, immature, um, making mistakes, and I had to pay for those mistakes. Like eighth grade, I was I was in I was in Julie around that time. We were actually breaking into cars and, and just doing things we shouldn't have been doing. Um, just trying to find any means of money, um, just to try to survive. So we, we were doing that, and you know it's, it's not justified at all. That was one way of, of of trying to get ends to eat. I think that when he sat in that jail cell that day, he just realized that this wasn't the kind of person that his grandmother wanted him to be, and this wasn't the kind of life that he wanted to live and it was just like a defining moment in his life that look this isn't what i'm going to do for the rest of my life i'm not going to be in and out of jail in and out of trouble and he made a, a, a focused effort on doing the right thing it could have been worse than it was um, i had guys i'm um, just a little older than me getting sent to jail for, for 40 years um and i was like dang like I, I really didn't like what i had and to think about 40 years like nah, like I, I don't want to. I don't want to be in this system that long. And that was just one of the things that kind of scared him straight. And um, he said it was a very humbling experience and something that really guides his decision making now. Um, that the things that some other kids might do in college, you know, he just didn't do a lot of or, or, or any of. I definitely needed to um, to 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 get into football. And I'm glad I did get into football. I got started playing football in second grade. It was always my second grade, honestly. Um, I played a lot of sports. I did basketball, track, football. But when I actually knew that I had talent to, I always felt like I had talent, but when I actually knew it was probably ninth grade. He had goals and what he wanted to do. I, you know, I told him that, that, uh, that they were lofty goals, and, and, uh, but with you know, hard work and, and uh, dedication and I think he could get it done. When I came to him, I was letting him know like I want to play in the NFL. I want to be the number one recruit coming out in college. Like those are the goals and aspirations that I have. Between me and a couple of my coaches, we took him all over the country really. We went to Stanford, Oklahoma, Auburn, Alabama, Ole Miss, um, mostly all SEC schools. I had had a, a friend take him to Baylor because that was one of the schools he really liked. Um, and then another coach took him to Texas A&M. So we traveled all over. Arkansas was my first offer though. And I feel like they had faith in me and they reached out. I definitely appreciate appreciated that they would even think of me that much to give me an offer. And then after them, like offers just started flowing in. After taking all the visits and everything I did, like that's where I was the most com comfortable in is Arkansas. Like, I feel like everything happens for a reason. I feel like if I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have got the Judy, I would have kept progressing to doing things that I shouldn't have been doing, and I probably wouldn't be here right now. I feel like it was God just telling me, "Hey, sit down, um, sit down. I'm, I'm giving you chance after chance. So just sit down and uh, basically just reap your benefits or whatever you put in. Um, just work for everything you want. So that's how, that's how I feel. So I just sat down and just started working. Um, got to. Got to hear my name called on draft day. With the 95th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select 
Victelvin Ajin. Yeah, you fired up? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah.